is the focus most of the time it is on the other person and what the other person needs to change or how the other person isn't pleasing you. When you focus on the other person, you're always looking, well, most of us look at what's wrong with that person. Why are they behaving that way? I want them to behave this way. And we start to pray about it. You know, Lord, change my spouse. Lord, make my spouse more available. Make my spouse more communicative. Make them more affectionate. Make them come home on time. Make them help out around the house more. There's all kinds of things that we can think about that we want to have changed about our spouse. And I understand that because I tend to get pulled in that direction too. It's a lot easier to focus on what the other person is not doing or what the other person is doing wrong. You know, in reality, almost every couple that came to see me in my private practice, that was the goal. Fix my husband. Now, husbands tended to like working with me because I helped them find a voice about what they were thinking and feeling and why they were doing the things they were doing. That, when it puts us in that reactive mode, we're looking at what needs to be fixed. So there's a difference between reacting and responding. Reacting is you're just going completely with your immediate emotions and you're probably in attack mode, fix mode, correct mode, some sort of a defensive mode because things are not going well. If you're following, if you know where your husband's going, if you know what his intentions are, if you understand what he's thinking, what he's feeling, you know, and why he's wanting to do what he's wanting to do, makes it a lot easier to follow him, right? But men often don't do that. They often don't share with us what it is that they're up to, right? So we immediately go into this mode of, wow, this is not good. Because we pick up on those vibes. We're very emotionally sensitive. And we can tell when, when our spouse is pulled away from us. And we start to think the worst. Now, as we start to think the worst, guess what happens? Our anxiety goes up. It goes through the roof. It gets worse and worse, which makes us even more reactive. Instead, to be proactive. Now, being proactive simply means that you take a step back and you go, what's really going on here? What's really happening? You know, I, I married this guy because I adored him. I married him because he was cute. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Not enough, but it's good. But you also married him because you thought you were going to go somewhere together. And now he's not telling you where he's going. So the question you want to ask yourself is, why is he not telling me what's going on? What is happening that's keeping him from sharing with me what is bothering him? Now, I got to tell you, sometimes women do not want to know. And men pick up on those vibes. You know, men don't want to tell their wives what's bothering them because for two reasons, basically. Number one, he doesn't want to hurt your feelings if it has something to do with you. And number two, he doesn't want to make you angry because an angry wife is just not, it's just not where he wants to go. You know, he gets enough anger and aggression in the world just being male as it is. So he's looking to you for something different. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't need to change. I believe he probably does. I mean, we all could use some improvement, right? So what is it that's keeping him from being improved? What is it that's getting in his way? What is he afraid of? What is, what is getting in his way of talking? And you can only know that by starting to study men in general. 
no, they're not all alike, but they do have some very common characteristics. And that's what I created a wise woman's guide to men and marriage for is to help you understand what those differences are.